Hey guys, Ken Scott, senior U.S. Immigration Law and Intelligence Analyst with Triple W, U.S. Immigration Waiver Services.com, and we resolve all of your USA border crossing issues. So today is August 23rd, I think, 2023. So this video, I'll try to make it quick, but you guys know I tend to be long winded. I want to address some things that some of you guys just don't seem to get. You don't seem to understand that these border cases, a lot of times, they're not easy to do. They're not easy to clear. And as of 2021, we have a 100% success rate and it's still going strong. Um, you guys need to understand this stuff takes time. This stuff is not fast. And getting a getting sick and tired of being compared to uh, Batman's pardons and waivers because what Batman's pardons and waivers charge you guys do these cases um, are a lot less than what we charge. But the reason why is at the risk of sounding like a parrot, being a former federal officer in Washington State and former law enforcement officer there, it gives you the insight regarding how uh, or the best way to get these cases resolved slash cleared. And more so, this video ties into what I'm about to talk about today. I don't mean the guy who stole a car in 1940. Not that. I'm talking about the more complex stuff, which I'm going to go over here on this list quickly. So you guys need to understand, this stuff takes time, and it costs money. Uh, there's a gentleman that came in today, and, well, I, I won't really go, over into, go, go into that, I guess. But you guys got to understand, this takes time and money, more so the complex stuff, again. You stole a car in 1990 or 40, that's irrelevant. Or you um, got stopped in 1971, you had one of the good old sherm sticks or joints in your pocket. I don't mean that. I'm talking about this complex stuff like, we're gonna go over it. And these are US entry waiver serious slash very complex issues longer to fix. So we'll say one. Admitting to drug use to CBP. Guys, please pardon my handwriting. I know you guys can't see it from there. But it says admitting to drug use to CBP. Guys, this is a lot of work to clear. This is massive work. Because the fact that they consider this, this more serious than, let's just say, armed robbery. Let's say case in point, Joe Smith goes into a gas station. He's got his Glock pointing at the side like that, say, empty out the drawer, give me all the money, give me the money. And I'll go as far as to say he's got three convictions for it. And he's saying, give me the money, give me the money, give me, give me the money. That is actually less complex to fix slash clear than this. Because Joe likely has, uh, he likely won't go out and rob again. Now, the reason why he robbed the store is a totally different story. He might have robbed the store or the gas station, maybe because he has a drug problem. So minus the drug problem part, if he's just down on his luck, down and out needs money, nothing to do with drugs, that's a lot less work to clear. And you say, well, why? Because this person is more of a threat to society than uh, uh, the guy who does this. The guy who does this after those three times, he, you know, he got married. Let's say he got a, went to school, trade school, and now he's a carpenter. Got a good job. He's not likely to walk in there and like this. This person, <laughs> it's a higher degree of probability they're going to have a relapse than him. So we got to show a lot more. We got to show a lot of other things in our packets and stuff like this than a guy who's done this. If that got, if that makes any sense to you, because this person right here will cost us Saudi a lot more. If they have a relapse, let's say you got um, 20 of these, these people. You know how much money the, the BC government has to pay to house these people, feed them, give them the free money that the government does and all that good stuff? This costs a lot more than the guy who's done this. The guy who's done this only because of the fact that he's down, he's down on his luck and just needs fast money. He might scare the shit out of the uh, clerk this person is going to cost the government a lot more money than this person. So this one is a lot more work to get cleared. We, we had to show more stuff here to justify 
why CBP should give the person a waiver. Hopefully it clears it up with you guys. You guys, some of you guys just don't get it. And you guys go to that border and you tell the guard you did the, or the, you're just digging your hole deeper and deeper and deeper as opposed to the guy who came in like this. The, empty all your drawers right now. All right, second one. Child molestation. That goes without saying. Again, who's a more of a threat to society? Joe or the person says, <clears throat> mm, hey, little fella, you come on over here with that nice old bubble butt right now, and you sit in there on Uncle Herbert's lap. Mm. Come on, guys. Who's more of a threat? Him or? Mm. Gosh, gosh, my gosh. Mm. Come on, guys. Common sense. The guy who... Uh, Says, hmm, I like that arch cross because you're wearing. He's, well, not just he, it could be she. That person has a greater chance to um, have more of a negative impact on society because they likely have done that more than one time. So you got to show a lot more rehab for that than the guy who's this. Common Sense 101. The cabotage, interstating, point to point truck driving. For you guys who are not truck drivers, uh, what happens a lot sometimes, at least here in Surrey, you get people who cross that border who are truck drivers, and they think they can make extra money by going point to point slash cabotage driving. What that is, if I'm driving down from Surrey to California to pick up a load of apples, I'm supposed to go to California, pick up the apples, bring those apples back to Surrey, and that's fine, that's allowed. I'm not supposed to go down to cross from Surrey go down to uh, Oregon, pick up a load of oranges, take those over to California, they'll go to California, pick up the apples and come back here. That's the cabotage point-to-point -point driving. And that's a lot of work to get clear because the fact that if nothing else, Donald Trump wants jobs for Americans. And he's coming back in 2025. He's back in office. So because of that, no, not just because of him, but because of that, the Americans want to protect their jobs. And not just the truck driving, just in general. So that's why sometimes it's harder to get work visas, depending upon what you do for especially. But that makes sense. The way CBP looks at it is that same American truck driver could have taken that job moving the uh, fruit from Oregon to California. But someone coming from here doing that job is just taking that job from the American. And that's that's worse than the guy coming, coming in to open up the drawer. That's a lot worse. Deportations, that goes without saying. But that stuff, even with the cabotage, but with that stuff, you have a, you usually have a U.S. history. And in these waiver packets, you got to show why the person deserves to be approved for a waiver. I said, earlier, I said justified. Let's just say you got to show why the person deserves to be approved because you're not entitled to, to a waiver. So just because you're Canadian, you think you're entitled to a waiver. You're not entitled. To a waiver and any cbp officer will probably agree with me you are at the headquarters at the aro you are approved at the uh in simple terms i'll say at the pleasure of the adjudicating officer at the officer's discretion if he or she approves you and if this is your waiver guys by the way you go to the border walk in this does not guarantee entry because again this is the border officer here this officer right here has to allow you entry. This is fine. He can say, I don't care what that says. Tell me what happened. So this, in some ways, means nothing. He says to prove waiver, he can say to you, I don't give a flying flamingo what that is in your hand. I want you to tell me right now what happened with that crime you had. What happened with the, uh, the, uh, the okay, the, the, the rails. That, how often did you do the rails? You know how you take the, uh, uh, you take take your card and you scoop it. You guys know what I'm talking about. He's going to ask you how often did you do your rails? What year? When? Yada yada. And whatever. And the more you you elaborate, whatever you say, goes into the database, and when it goes in there. That stays there forever. So when you apply for your waiver, guys, and use these discount waiver companies that bend you over the table, and you get denied for it, 
It's your own fault. Because some of you guys need to get some common sense about some of this stuff. This one is very hard to clear. Or this is, a, I should say, this one can be a lot of work to clear. This one and the child molestation. Fake names, false statements. That's under 6C for misrepresentation. That's more work than, than Joe with the empty out to draw. Because you just made a false statement to an American federal officer. That's a, almost an unpardonable sin. They are allowed to make false statements to you, but you are not allowed to make false statements to them. And you said, well, Ken, it's BS. Why, can, how, why should they get away with it? And I'll tell you why. And, I, and I, for a second, I'm going to put on my uh, old law enforcement hat. Why? Because we can. Because we can do it. You're trying to come in entry, or I'm investigating you. You're going to do what I say, how I say it. You're going to speak when spoken to, and no more. And then if the person gets froggy, you know, they want to, like, like uh, uh, get stiff with you, so to speak. Then the, Kev the, the uh, Kevlar gloves go on. Then it's time to rumble. So let me take that. Okay, now I'll take that head back off. You guys don't get it. You're dealing with officers who are usually well, quite often combat trained from these small towns of Mississippi, <laughs> the, uh, the coal mines of uh, West Virginia or whatever. They grew up eating baked beans from the tin carrying daddy's shotgun, you're not going to win that kind of way. It doesn't make any sense. You guys need to understand that. And you're not entitled to anything um, at that port of entry. And some of you guys have this entitlement. You got to let that let that go. The only thing you, they'll say, uh, the only thing you're entitled to is a jail cell. That you're entitled to, yeah. Once you guys understand how those concepts work, you actually won't have as many issues. Okay, I said fake name, I said false statements. Okay, overstays. That ties into Trump. Trump already said there are way too many illegal immigrants in the US. And not to get not to play politics here, since Biden's taken over, apparently that's gotten worse. Apparently that southern border now is flooded with uh migrants, as they call them. But apparently when Trump was in, it was a lot better than that southern border, but now it's not. So that goes without saying. You overstay. That's a big violation uh, of the law. And again, that, that can be more work than empty out, empty out the drawer. Ties and equities issues. That's not necessarily a waiver. Ties and equities, it goes under section uh, 214B and section 212.7A regarding ties. You're, the manual states you're supposed to have home, well, you're supposed to have ties to your home country. So if you live in Surrey, you're supposed to have ties, Surrey here. And I won't go into what those ties are because the discount waiver companies, they keep trying to reverse engineer our material and that's not going to happen. And if you don't have the proper ties, depending upon your situation, but if you don't have the proper ties, they could turn you around and they could give you that five-year ban, which is the deportation, which is also called expedited removal. And you're going to have a very bad day. And depending upon how you get the five-year ban, not, not to go into it too much, but depending upon how you get it, that five-year ban could actually turn into a lifetime or it could only be five years. It depends upon the circumstances of each case. And what I'm finding is a lot of these discount waiver companies and lawyers, they don't understand the concepts behind these things, which is, I mean, it's great for us because that's why we charge the fees we do because all these uh, peons over here, these commoner places, companies, lawyers, they don't understand the concepts. They don't have the regulations. They don't have the manuals. I've got one of the manuals right over there I'm looking at. And they wish they had access to it. And these manuals are the same manuals used by CBP. Some of these manuals we use are in their actual computers. Yes, well, Ken, how'd you get that? I, I won't go into that, <laughs> but it's the same manuals, same techniques. That's why we are at a 100% success rate as of 2021. Normally, we're at the 98 to 99%, but recently, we got to 100% again. But we, we don't usually, well, we don't go below 98. But right now, we're at 100. Uh, please. Working without a visa. That's the same thing there as the overstays. You're working in the USA without authorization. That, again, that's worse 
then give me all your money. Open up. Even if the guy says, give me all your money, open up. And the clerk got lippy and he he said, what did I say to you, uh, uh, B-I-T-C-H? Give me all the MF and money now. I'm going to put two in you. Now, again, these are worse than that last gentleman I said. Because that last gentleman is less complex and clear than what I've just said. He likely has no U.S. history, so we just have to show why he did what he did here. And if it's involving this, you know, we got to tread carefully around that. But we got to show why he did what he did here, why he's not likely to do it again. These discount waiver companies, they don't understand, again, these concepts. So, again, this category is use entry waiver, serious slash very complex issues, longer to fix. So, and, and another thing that happens quite often, these people who have these offenses I just mentioned to you, a lot of them don't have the financial means as opposed to individuals that have like the drug trafficking, the drive-by shooting, death threats. The guy says, give me all your money, uh, assaulting police. Some of these, all, some of these uh, clients who practice their Mike Tyson moves on RCMP officers and win. <laughs> so, uh, even the money laundering, well, loan shocking is fine, but the money laundering, the uh, uh, death threats, all that stuff. Like, for example, a gentleman that says to uh, another gentleman, you owe me $3,000 for whatever reason. If you don't pay me my money by 5 p.m. today, I'm coming back and then it's going to be lights out for you. That actually, there's actually a way to show that that offense does not require a waiver. And how do I know? Because we've done it already on more than one occasion. So you got a surprise. And the thing is, we don't make any of this stuff up. It's all about the regulations. So whatever's in the regulation is what we use. And that's how some of this stuff, can, it's a lot less complex to, uh, to get clear. So we actually make more money in the less complex stuff than this stuff because... There's much. There's a larger number of this stuff than this stuff. This stuff is still higher, but these tend to be more work than this. So even though the border officer likely would tell you that you're better off being an ex-drug dealer, that's less work than this. All right, guys. So hopefully I didn't talk too long. Again, it's Ken Scott, senior U.S. immigration law intelligence analyst with Triple W. USEntryWaiverServices.com and that's 888-908-3841 or 604-562-8140. And again, I don't want to sound like a parrot, but you guys got to remember, you get what you pay for. So if you use one of those discount waiver companies or one of those incompetent lawyers and you get denied, it is your fault, no one else's. So, oh, and live long and prosper. Why you should be denied entry to that country. So, if you're denied entry to the United States for criminality, you know, maybe, you know, I had a bar fight, or maybe you were accused of, uh, you know, I don't know, you know. <laughs> it's okay. You didn't do it. This is what you want to do. You may need a U.S. entry waiver. You may. May not. If you do, you want to use sendittoken.com. Send it to Ken.com. And once you use send it to Ken.com, we can get you clear to enter the United States. Does not matter what your conviction is, whether it's for <laughs> or nothing is matter. impossible. Why? Because we're there and you need us. Send it to Ken.com. Anticipation bill, you can feel it. The legendary opponent is a heartbeat away. <laughs>